Oh, 
Ayudanam maham bhajram Ayudanam maham bhajram Denunam asmikam adu Denunam asmikam adu Prajanas chasmi kandarpa Prajanas chasmi kandarpa Sarpanam asmi vasuki Sarpanam asmi vasuki Ayudanam aham vajram Ayudanam aham vajram Denunam asmikam adu Denunam asmikam adu Prajanas chasmi kandarpa Prajanas chasmi kandarpa Sarpanam asmi vasuki Sarpanam asmi vasuki Ayudanam aham vajram Ayudanam Sarvanam Asmi Vasu 
weapons. Of all weapons. Aham. Aham. I am. I am. Bajram. Bajram. The thunderbolt. The thunderbolt. Denunam. Denunam. Of cow. Of cows. Of cows. As me. As me. I am. I am. Kamaduk. Kamaduk. The Sarabi cow. The Sarabi cow. Rajana. Rajana. The cause for begetting children. The cause for begetting children. Cha. Cha. And. And. As me. As me. I am. I am. Kandapa. Kandapa. Cupid. Cupid. Sarpanam, Sarpanam of serpents, of serpents. As me, as me. I am, I am. Vasuki, 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 Vasuki. Translation: Of weapons, I am the thunderbolt. Among cows, I am the surabi. Of causes for procreation, I am Kandarpa, the god of love. And of serpents, I am Vasuki. So who remembers last night we studied of what's the name of, of, of horses I am? Uchaisraba. And then of elephants? Ayravata. <coughs> and then we heard about what was the. <laughs> Forgetting the other ones. Uh, we heard about uh, um, among men. Yeah, I am the monarch, right? And the first night we heard about of trees. I am. And among the devarishis, I am. And then of we heard about of Gandharvas. Chitra Rata. And one more. Sages. 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 Among the Sages. Sages. Kapila. Kapila. Who is that? Kapila? The son of? Devahuti. Son of Devahuti. And what philosophy did he present? Sankhya philosophy. Right. So tonight we're hearing some more of the vibhutis of Lord Krishna, ways in which we can remember Lord Krishna. So the purport by Srila Prabhupada, the thunderbolt, indeed a mighty weapon, represents Krishna's power. In Krishna Loka, in the spiritual sky, there are cows which can be milked at any time, and they give as much milk as one likes. Of course, such cows do not exist in this material world, but there is a mention of them in Krishna Loka. The Lord keeps many such cows, which are called Surabi. It is stated that the Lord is engaged in herding the Surabi cows. Kandapa is the sex desire for presenting good sons. Therefore, Kandapa is the representative of Krishna. Sometimes sex is engaged in only for sense gratification. Such sex does not represent Krishna but sex for the procreation of good children is called Kandarpa and represents Krishna. Omma jnana timmarandasya jnana jnana shalakaya tatsur militanyena tasmai shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya mano vistam Tapitam yena bhutale Swayam rupakatam ayam Dadati swapadantikam Pandeham shri guru Shri yata padakamalam Shri guru vaishnavam shya Shri rupam sahrajatam Sahagana raganatam vitam
in different parts of the world they have different cows but Krishna says he is the Surabi cow. Surabi cow we read about in Ramayana it's told how uh, Vashishta had one cow and it happened that this great Kshatriya king came there with his army and he came to Vashista's ashram and Vashista invited the king to come and he said I, I can provide for you but the king said no I have a whole army here there's so many of us it will be difficult for you to feed all of us but Vashista said no it's alright I have my cow I have my Kamadenu cow Kamadenu cow is the Surabi cow right Denunam asmi kamaduk. So kamaduk, I have my kama denu cow. She's a surabi cow. And the king was surprised because Vashista, from the cow, he was able to produce huge quantities of food. It all came from the kama denu cow. And not only did he produce huge quantities of food, he produced all kinds of desirable things, heavenly ladies and so on, to comfort the soldiers and everything which could be possibly desired. It all came from the Surabi cow. And the, the king was amazed and he thought, oh, wow, this cow is so amazing. And he, he wanted Vashista to give the cow to him. And Vashista said, no, I cannot part with my Surabi cow. And there was a great battle. And they fought. But the king was defeated by the power of the Brahmana, Vashista. So that king went on to become, he decided he should also become a Brahmana. Because he saw the power of the Brahmana was greater than the power of the Kshatriya. He was thinking he could easily defeat the Brahmana. But when he tried to fight with the Brahmana, he was defeated. So the king decided he should also become a Brahmana. And he went on to become Vishwamitra. So there was always fighting between Vashista and Vishwamitra. They were always caught fighting with each other. Vishwamitra would want to get things from Vashista. So cows, Surabi cows, they can give unlimited quantities of milk. Just like in Vrindavan, you know, they were talking at Rathiyatra, there was a conversation between Swarup Damodar and Srivas Pandit. Right? So who is Srivas Pandit? And what's his identity? Narada, yes, Srivas Pandit is Narada, an expansion of Narada Muni. And who is Swarup Damada? He is the go one of the gopis. Swarup Damada is the gopi Lalita. There's Swarup Damada and Ramananda Rai. Ramananda Rai, he is in Krishna Lila, he is the gopi Vishaka. And Swarup Damadhan, he is the gopi Lalita. You know, Lalita is a little older than Radharani. So she's sometimes strict, you know, and she sometimes correct to, no, don't do that, do it like this. So Swarup Damadhan is like that, he's a little strict, you know. So he was having a conversation with Srivas Pandit. Srivas Pandit is Narada Muni. And they were watching the Hera Panchami festival, which takes place at Rathi Atra. During the Rathi Atra, Lord Jagannath comes out of the temple with Balaram and Subhadra, and they go to Gundicha. They go to the Gundicha, and Gundicha represents Vrindavan. In other words, they're going home, just like, you know, Maybe you come to Kuchin and when you get a holiday, you go to your home, maybe some village somewhere in 
Sarawak, you know, some place somewhere. So, Lord Jagannath and Bawaram and Subhadra, they all went home to Vrindavan. And after a few days, the Goddess of Fortune, Goddess of Fortune is the wife of Lord Jagannath. So, after a few days, the Goddess of Fortune got restless and she thought, why is my husband not come back yet? So she got all dressed up and she went to look for him. And this is the festival of Harapanchami. The Goddess of Fortune goes to Vrindavan to find out what her husband's doing and when he's coming back. So uh, the Goddess of Fortune uh, got all dressed up because she's going to go to find her husband. And they make a big festival, it's a big festival, Hera Panchani takes place on the fifth day, the fifth day of Rathiyatra, you know? If you go to Kalkara or if you go to Puri, they do the Rathiyatra like one day is a parade and then they bring the deities to Gundicha, which represents Vrindavan. And the deities will stay there for seven days. And then after seven days, then they will come back. There'll be another parade where the deity comes back. So on the fifth day, the goddess of fortune came there with all of her servants. And they arrested Lord Jagannath's servants and they had them all bow down to the goddess of fortune. So Swarup Dhamma, as Sri, Srivas Pandit was watching. Now Srivas Pandit, in the mood of Narada Muni, Narada Muni is a Vaikuntha man. Vaikuntha, in Vaikuntha there's the goddess of fortune. It's not like Goloka. Vaikuntha is, in the, God, in the Vaikuntha, it's Lord Narayan with the goddess of, God, the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi. So Srimas Pandit was watching and he was thinking, oh, just look how opulent the goddess of fortune is. Because she was all dressed up with all her bangles and jewelry, and, you know, nose ring and all ornaments everywhere. And he was thinking, oh, look how opulent the goddess of fortune is. And Srimas Pandit said to him, no, it didn't. You don't know the opulence of Vrindavan. And Srivas Pandit was saying, what, Vrindavan? Where is the opulence in Vrindavan? It's just the village. But Swarup Dhamadar said, no, you don't know the opulence of Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, every cow is a Surabi cow. They can give all your desires, whatever you want, not only milk, they can give unlimited quantities of milk anytime and they can provide anything you want as well. And there are trees, but they're Kalpabriksha trees. They also fulfill all your desires. You get fruits of all season, just like now is the mango season, but if you come in December, it's not the mango season. So we know fruits by the season, but if you have a Kalpabriksha tree, you can get any kind of fruit any time in the year. So this is the Kalpabriksha tree, and you actually it can fulfill all your desires. And then, what to speak of the trees and the cows, even the dust, even that padarenu, the dust and the holy dam, it is all chintamani. Oh, chintamani, it can fulfill all of your desires, material and spiritual. Wouldn't you like some Chintamani dust? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So, Chintamani dust, 
That is the opulence of Vrindavan. So, the cows, but the people of Vrindavan try to understand that the people of Vrindavan, they're so devoted that they don't want anything. They will not ask for anything except fruit and flowers and milk. They don't want any because they have no material desire. So that is the nature of the people of Vrindavan, that they have pure love for Krishna. So they don't desire anything material. They're, they just want flowers and fruits and milk to offer to Krishna. They don't want anything for themselves. They just want to offer to Krishna. So the Surabi cow, they're very, very dear to Lord Krishna. After Lord Krishna picked up the Govardhan hill, when Indra had become angry at Krishna and the people of Vrindavan because they had not, they, they stopped his sacrifice, they stopped the Indra Yagya. So at that time, Indra ordered his Samvataka clouds. They're very special clouds which come at the end of the universe and they annihilate the whole universe. And he sent them to go to Govardhan and destroy all the cows and all the people. Indra sent them all there. So Lord Krishna saw the clouds and all the people of they were all terrified because everything became so dark. Although it was the middle of the day, they were all afraid. It became very cold and there were balls of ice falling from the sky and a piercing cold wind. And everybody came to Krishna. Oh, Krishna, what are we going to do? Save us. So Krishna picked up Govardhan Hill. And Krishna said, bring all the cows under the Govardhan hill. And all the people, they also came. Everyone came for shelter under the Govardhan hill. So Krishna saved all the people and all the cows. So after seven days, Krishna put back the Govardhan hill. And after Krishna put back the Govardhan hill, then Indra became humble. And he thought, oh, I have committed a great offense. I should go and apologize to Lord Krishna. Because now I understand Krishna's position. So he went to Lord Brahma and Lord Brahma said, you better not go on your own. Because if you go on your own, Krishna won't look at you. He'll be so disgusted with you. He won't even look at you. But he said, if you take Mother Surabi, take Surabi cow with you, then that will help. Krishna is very fond of the Surabi cows. So Indra brought Surabi cow with him and they went to meet Lord Krishna and they went to a place at the side of Govardhan Hill. There's a place there, it's called Govinda Kund. There's a lake there because what happened was Krishna was given Abhishek. He was, Indra came and offered prayers to Lord Krishna and apologized and Mother Surabi also came and she thanked Lord Krishna because Lord Krishna had protected all the cows from the danger of Indra's storm. And so then Mother Surabi, along with Indra, they gave Krishna Abhishek. Indra used the water from the heavenly planets, the Ganga water from heaven, and Surabi cow used her own milk. So from her udder, she poured milk onto Lord Krishna. And it said the Kund there, where, where there's, a, there's a lake there, so that lake was formed. Originally it was milk and water from the bathing of Lord Krishna. So the Surabi cows are so dear to Lord Krishna. 
when we offer our respects to Lord Krishna, we say, Namo Pramana Devaya Jagatthaya Krishnaya Bhundaya Namo Namaha Go Pramana. Go means a cow, right? Go means the cows and go also means the senses. So go Pramana. The Brahmanas and the cows are very dear to Lord Krishna. So people sometimes wonder, Oh, you people, you worship cows. Well, it's not that we worship cows, but we, we do protect the cows. It's a duty to protect the cows, because cow is one of the mother. There are different mothers. For example, the wife of the king is a mother. The wife of the brahmana is a mother. The wife of the guru is the mother, and then the nurse is the mother. Earth is also the mother. Bhumi, earth. And then you have also the cow, and there's another one. Our own mother. Our own mother, yeah. <laughs> the most important, yeah. Our own mother. So like that, seven mothers. So the cow, Surabi cow, is mother, and we should protect the cows. Krishi go raksha vaninam vaishya karma svabhavaja. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the duty of the Vaishya. And Lord Krishna appeared in the Vaishya family. Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. Krishna and Balaram were there for their childhood with Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda and they were brought up with the cowherd people to go out in the forest every day with the cows, taking care of them. So we encourage people to protect the cows. People sometimes are very cruel to cows. They think so long as the cow is giving milk, then it's okay. And as soon as there's no milk, then they want to kill the cow. That is why, just like, if you know, as soon as you retire and you're not earning any money, we'll kill you. <laughs> you no longer any use. You don't bring any money home. So we'll kill you. So you cannot do like that. So the cows so have to take care of the cow and we're, we're teaching people the importance of the cow. Actually this planet belongs to the cow. The deity of this planet is Bhumi. Bhumi and Bhumi is in the form of a cow. So she's very, very important. The cow is a domestic animal. She needs people, the people we're supposed to take care of the cow. And we need the cow because the cow provides the most important food, milk. Milk is necessary. Every one of us has drank milk at some point in our life. As babies need to get milk. Usually they'll drink the milk from the breast of their mother. But as they grow older, they have to drink milk from the cow. So milk is very important for developing a good brain to understand spiritual knowledge. If you don't get milk, you will not develop a good brain to understand the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita. And milk is also necessary because from milk we get ghee and with ghee we can do yajna. We can offer sacrifices to the Lord. So the cow is very important. We don't drink goat's milk. We don't drink camel's milk. <laughs> Other things in the Milk means the, from the cow. So cows are very dear to Lord Krishna and we, we definitely 
on to understand Krishna, how he is the Surabhi cow. And then, of causes of procreation, I am Kandarpa. Kandarpa meaning Cupid. So the cause of procreation, the sex act, the, 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 the God of love. Krishna says he is Kandarpa, the God of love. We are controlled by Cupid, but Krishna controls Cupid. We are controlled by Cupid, but Krishna controls Cupid. But Krishna is conquered by Radharani. Right? Because Srimati Radharani, she personifies pure devotional service. Devotional service. Krishna is Madan Mohan. Right? There's Madan, or Mo Mohan, Mohan is Cupid, right? Mohan. So Krishna is Madan Mohan. He's the conqueror of Cupid. Madan Mohan. Radha Madan Mohan. Deity is there. So Krishna is Madan Mohan. He conquers Cupid. And Radha Rani is Madan Mohan Mohini, right? The conqueror of Krishna. So we want to understand Lord Krishna, how he is appearing in so many different features in this material world. And finally we hear Lord Krishna said, of, among snakes or serpents, I am Vishuki. So last night we were explaining how the demigods and the demons were churning the milk ocean. The demigods and the demons made a truce and they were churning the milk ocean and they were using the Mandarachala mountain and they used Vashuki to, they used that as a rope to go around the mountain and to pull the mountain back. So Vashuki took part in that churning of the milk ocean to produce the different things which came. Do you remember all the things which came from the milk ocean? First of all came the poison, right? And Lord Shiva drank the poison. So he's called Nilakanta, right? And then did what else came from the turning of the milk ocean? Lakshmi came, the goddess of fortune came, and she was taken by Lord Na Well, she picked a husband herself. She picked her own husband, she picked Lord Narayan. That's a good choice, right? <laughs> you pick another man, no, no. You have problems. So, go for Lord Narayan. Rukmini said the same thing, you know. If any woman goes for any man other than Lord Krishna, you're stupid. <laughs> so, of serpents, I am Vashuki. What, there was one time, there was this one sadhu, he wanted to meet Prabhupada and he asked Prabhupada, he said, can God be in a snake? The man, this man, he was a sadhu, but he didn't know. He said, he said can, can God be in a snake? And Prabhupada told him, he said, yes, if he wants, he can. So God is everywhere, so he's in the snakes also. And we read, you know, there was one snake became a devotee, became a disciple of Narada Muni. And Narada Muni said, now you're a devotee, you cannot bite people. <laughs> so, you should, so after some time, the snake came back and complained to Narada Muni. He said, you know, you made it really tough for me. He said, that all the people are giving me a lot of trouble, the children are playing with me and teasing me and doing things to me. Before they used to be afraid of me, but you told me I cannot bite them. So now they're not afraid of me and they tease me all the time. They make it my life very difficult. So Narada Muni said, well I said you couldn't bite, but I never said you could not show your teeth. <laughs> So then the snake understood. So next time the children came, the snake rose up and pretended it was going to bite them. And all the children ran away. <laughs> so in this way the snake was able to live peacefully.
but sometimes it's said that when the snake is killed, then the sadhu is happy. It's said in Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a statement there in the seventh canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, that even the sadhu is happy when the snake is killed. And so Prabhupada was a Prabhupada said there was an instant one time in Mayapur, there was a snake in Mayapur. And Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati said, kill it. And Prabhupada was surprised and said, oh, kill the snake. You thought, you know, is that, that's, that's not very good. The devotee, we shouldn't kill. And Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati is telling him, kill the snake. But then he saw in the Bhagavatam later on that Prahlad Maharaj was, he was talking about how Lord Nasringadev killed Haranya Kashipu. So the, even the, uh, the, the, the sadhu becomes happy when the snake is killed. And so demons who are like envious snakes, they should be killed. So like that. So if it's a poison snake, you know, you, you can kill it without fear. It's not wrong because the general poison snakes are they're very dangerous to have around. They can bite innocent people and give trouble to people. So to kill the snake is allowed, it's sanctioned by the scriptures. But this Vashuki, he's very special not going to kill Vashuki. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, we read how uh, uh, Maharaj Parikshit was cursed to die and he was to be bitten by the snake bird. What's the name of that snake bird? The snake bird would, would come and bite Maharaj Parikshit after seven days. That's how Maharaj Parikshit gave up his body that the snake bird, you get these snakes and they, they're like birds, they can fly. Oh, you have to be careful, huh? <laughs> Flying snakes. So anyway, the snake bird it came and bit Maharaj Parikshit. That, but he was already in Samadhi by the time the snake bird came. He had already entered into Samadhi. So when the snake bird came, his body burst into flames. And in this way, Maharaj Parikshit went back to Godhead. He was already back to Godhead before the snake bird came and bit him. So, anyway, Maharaj Parikshit had a son. And his son was very angry when he saw that, when he heard that the snake bird had bitten his father and was, he thought it was the cause of his father's death. So he started to do a yagya and he wanted to kill all the snakes in the creation. He wanted to kill all the snakes and they were, they were all falling from the heavens, they were all being killed. But Maharaj Parikshit, well, that, the, the, this son of Maharaj Parikshit, he'd done the yagya, uh, the great sages all came to him and they told him that this is not very good, that you cannot kill all the snakes, that they are creations of God. God has created them, and you should not try to adjust the material nature by killing them all. You have to accept their existence. So you have to stop this yagya and don't kill them. So with the counseling from the great sages, the son of Maharaj Parishas, he stopped the yagya, he stopped killing all the snakes. So, like that, <laughs> there are many things that to be said about snakes. And Lord Krishna said, among snakes, I am Vashuki, the great celestial serpent who helps in churning the milk ocean. Alright, are there any questions? We're finishing a little early tonight, right? 
So it's very nice to go through these vibhutis and learn them. Of seasons, I am. What season? Spring. So I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm going back to the the other end, the other side. So thank you all very much for your association. So we encourage you all keep up the good work to spread Krishna consciousness here in Sarawak and help to make Sarawak Krishna conscious. More and more souls coming to Krishna consciousness. It's very nice to see devotees of Krishna are everywhere. We just have to find them. So certainly there's many more souls waiting to come to Krishna consciousness. We just have to be patient and we have to be enthusiastic and determined and certainly Krishna will send more and more people to become Krishna conscious. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada. Yeah.